everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and we've got another Linux distro review today. We are looking at Anagros, and if you are not familiar with this distribution, it is Arch-based, comes in a variety of different uh, desktop environments, and so has some really nice theming. Um, they use the Numix theming, which, uh, uh, you know, has been really popular lately. Um, a lot of people go with the round Numix that they've gone with this uh, with the rectangular icons, which the, with the uh, the rounded corners. So, um, kind of unique look to it. But anyway, uh, right now I am on their homepage, and uh, you can see uh, you know it talks a little bit about the distribution. And I'll I'll leave a link down below so you can take a look at this uh, web page yourself. And just scrolling through it here, it talks a little bit about their most recent release. Now, it's not a true release in that, uh, you know, Arch is a rolling release model. So, uh, basically, the, the, the quote-unquote release is essentially just a snapshot. Um, but in this case, they have improved their installer as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for a few minutes, I'm going to switch over to uh, GNOME boxes so that you can see the installation and see how the installer works. Earlier versions of uh, Anagros, I, I had trouble with the graphical installer, um, but it, it's very much improved. Seems to be a, a, a continuing theme recently because uh, Manjaro in their upcoming um, uh, uh, zero dot nine release will have a, a not a new installer but an updated installer as well both distributions the inst the installation process is, is much I wouldn't say simpler but uh, um, less problematic than it used to be so uh, let's start the review by going over to uh, gnome boxes and we will take a look at the installation process so here we are in GNOME boxes, and I've set up a box for uh, demoing the uh, the Anagros um, installer. Set it up with 21 and a half gigs of disk space and four gigs of RAM. So let's fire this up, and uh, we'll look at the installer here. Let's start it live. Boom. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, uh, virtual machines, they do tend to lag a little bit as compared to live hardware. So if it seems like things are running slow, it's not necessarily the installer or whatnot. It's just the, kind of the, the nature of the beast when you're working in virtual machines. All right, so here we are inside our live environment. Let's go and click the Install It button so that you can see the installer. Hey, that's why we're here. Okay, so pick your language. And uh, yeah, we meet all of those requirements. And for me, let's scroll down to English US. There we go. Click the next button. Uh, America, New York, it picked that just fine for me. If it doesn't select the correct one for you, you know, just do the drop down menus there and uh, pick what you need. Yep, it picked the right keyboard for me, English US. And then from here, you can pick what desktop environment you want. Do you want XFCE, OpenBox, Mate, KDE4? Now notice it's not KDE5, it is KDE4. GNOME, which is what I'm going to install here, Cinnamon, and then the base. The base has no desktop environment, so if you want to pick something other than what's listed here, you can do that do the base and then from command line you can go and install 
whatever desktop environment you want. Uh, obviously that's for a little more uh, of an advanced user. Definitely not, uh, not something for a new user to try. And then they have got some great options here. So you can go, do you want support for the Arch user repository? I don't see why you wouldn't. So let's go and pick that. Do you have Bluetooth devices that you need support for? Click yes or no. Extra fonts, yeah, I want that. Do I want Fire to add the Firefox web browser? Chromium is supplied by default, but do you also want Firefox? I'm not a big Firefox user, so I'm just gonna leave that off. Um, kernel, do you want the LTS kernel? or do you want to stick with the latest kernel um, I'm going to stick with I'm going to stick with the uh, the most recent kernel so I'm not going to select that uh, I do want LibreOffice though and it'll automatically install LibreOffice for you uh, printing support yes I want that uncomplicated firewall yes I want that window sharing SMB yes I want that so as you see you get all these neat options that uh, you know, granted, you could go and install a lot of this stuff afterwards, but this way you don't have to. At the same time, um, you know, a lot of distros, yeah, we'll go and we'll include all this by default. Well, what if you didn't want it? I mean, yeah, the more advanced users among us can go and we know how to how to uninstall stuff, but it's nice having a distribution where it's not going to load down. Uh, the, the distro with, with tons and tons of software which you may not use so anyway you've you said all that it'll for some of the selections it'll kind of give you a brief overview of what it's going to do there so uh, about the uncomplicated firewall about the AUR how would you like to proceed um, you can go and do a manual setup of the partition table and choose your mount points and all that or you can erase disk and install Anagros, um, and if you're going to do pick this option, you'll get you, you're given choices on: do you want to encrypt the installation, use LVM for the installation, um, do you want to set your home folder in a different partition? All excellent options. So let's. To me, this is the if you're going to do. Uh, uh, you know, a, a an installation using uh, you know erase everything. I would personally, if it were me, I would set this because then you can easily go and um, you know install a different distro or you know all kinds of things and uh, and not affect your home folder. So let's go with that. Okay, select the drive and select the bootloader and if you're if you're setting this up on a on a computer that already has other distros on it and you don't want to overwrite uh, grub or whatever bootloader you're using you can go and deselect this um, I like that it gives you the option okay let's put in a little bit of info here Give it your name. Let's call. Let's give a computer the name. Oh, we'll just use that for my computer name. There we go. Alex's PC and a username. Give it some passwords. And you can either select log in automatically or require my password save all this stuff and boom installation is underway and that is it to the installer and on completion of the installation this is a little message that you get Anagros installation confirmation installer complete do you want to restart now click yes and uh, boom the system reboots and uh, you're good to go alright we're back on regular hardware and as you can see I picked the GNOME desktop for this uh, this demo and uh, you know GNOME has always been 
one of my, uh, my one of my favorite desktop environments. So uh, you know, I, I had to pick it. <laughs> Besides, I've been playing around with Cinnamon and uh, and KDAE recently. It was uh, it was time to get back to the GNOME world. But anyway, um, for the most part, we have the standard uh, desktop layout, um, single top panel. Uh, one one thing that has been added, they've added the dash to dock extension, which is why you see the uh, the dock extended right here. Um, whereas normally you'd have to hit the uh, the window or super key to uh, to pull up this little uh, dock like uh, instrument. But anyway, so they've added that, and uh, as you can see, they've added their own their own desktop theming as well and if we go to change backgrounds and you can see there's a there's a variety of wallpapers available of course like anything else uh, or any other distribution running GNOME you can go to pictures and then just add a picture file from your pictures folder if you want to change to a different background uh, you know something custom for yourself um, and looking over here at the icons, you can see that they've got the Numix icons. And let me go and drag over. This is the GNOME Tweak tool. And uh, just so you know, if you wanted to try to recreate this look in a different distribution, for the icons, they have the Numix Square. The GTK theme is Numix Frost Light. And the Shell theme is also Numix Frost Light. One thing I do have to say for Anagros is that uh, it is one of the few distributions that doesn't go with a plain vanilla look uh, on the GNOME 3 desktop. You know, everybody tweaks XFCE and, and, and some of the other desktop environments, but it seems like most distributions that are running uh, GNOME 3, they stick with just the plain vanilla GNOME, which is fine. It's not a bad look. Uh, but uh, you know you would think that more distros would uh, would would tweak the look of it kernel number is 4.1.6 uh, and uh, that is the most recent stable now uh, you saw back in the installer selection that uh, that you have the choice of opting in for the LTS kernel. I did not do that when I did the installation, but you could go that route. RAM and CPU usage is about where I'd expect it for a GNOME distribution. We're running about 750 megs of RAM baseline, and with with the extensions we have here and uh, and um, the background services running, that's about what I'd expect. As far as software. Um, let me go and open this up here. Now, I when I installed this, I selected to install LibreOffice and um, oh, is there anything else? That, I think that was about it when I did the installation. On top of that, after I got the installation done, I added a simple screen recorder and GUVC video so that I could run my videos. Um, but other than that, I haven't added anything else. And just kind of running through real quick here, you can see um, that we've got basically uh, the, the standard uh, GNOME selection of, uh, of software uh, in addition to what you would see from an Arch distribution. Um, we've got PAMIC for our software management, and I'll come back and talk a little bit about that a little bit later. And then we've got our, our, our wired and wireless connections, GNOME books. Zero calculator, GNOME calendar, um, cheese webcam, Chromium for our web browser, which is, it's a, I wouldn't say it's unusual, but most of the time we see uh, Firefox as as the uh, um, browser of choice with distributions, but here we've got Chromium, um, CMake, which is for uh, uh, doing work with making packages. Um, GNOME Contacts, Desktop Search, um, GNOME Disk, um, Disk Usage Analyzer, Documents, Evine, which is our document viewer, GNOME Files, which you know, used to be called Nautilus, our firewall configuration, Gedit, of course I talked about adding GUVC video, um, and HB device management for, for printer needs, our image viewer, LibreOffice, 
the entire suite, um, our light locker settings, printer management, GNOME maps. Uh, where am I? Oh, there I am. Uh, GNOME music, uh, our notes, uh, password management, GNOME photos, uh, pin it. Pin, well, I cannot talk today. Pigeon Internet Messenger, our printer settings, uh, pulse audio settings, um, QT settings. Uh, we've got our screen reader seating, screenshot tool, our, our uh, settings menu, simple screen recorder, which I talked about, uh, software updater, sound recorder, GNOME system monitor, GNOME terminal, transmission for our BitTorrent client needs, um, the GNOME tweak tool, uh, GNOME videos, and GNOME weather. PAMIC is our software management tool and it is very similar to Synaptic Package Manager if, you, uh, if you're into the Ubuntu-based distros. Uh, open it up and you know if you know what you're looking for you know type it in, hit enter and boom it'll pull it up for you right click to select it for install and then hit the check mark and uh, look yes put in your password and boom it'll download it and install it for you uh, PAMIC also handles your updates so um, uh, basically it's it's set up so that at uh, when you first boot up it'll do a check for you to see if there's updated software and it'll give you a little notification that uh, you know hey uh, let's update the software um, you know I've been using it uh, previously uh, not only on uh, I've used it in Manjaro and I've installed it from the Arch user repository on uh, on my Arch um, setups uh, very nice uh, uh, piece of software as far as stability and 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 how everything worked that sort of thing everything was great which is a big improvement over some of the previous versions that I've reviewed or tried to review I think the last time I looked at Anagris was about a year ago I ran the cinnamon desktop I had all kinds of problems with it um, stability and issues and like and whatnot um, I also used to have all kinds of trouble with the installer so to see that everything seemed to work well this time, um, you know, I was really happy to see that. So, uh, two thumbs up to the developers for uh, for improving, um, you know, not only the installer but uh, making sure that everything was nice and stable and and, and whatnot. And uh, you know, having said all that, that is about it for this review. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Leave any comments, questions. All that kind of stuff. Hey, have you, have you, uh, you know, if you've tried it, let me know about it. Let me know what you think. But uh, you know, leave the comments, questions, that kind of stuff down below, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Love to have you on uh, on uh, the community. And uh, I will see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.